man has a choice. I chose the impossible. I built a city where the artist would not fear the censor. Where the great would not be constrained by the small. Where the scientist would not be bound by petty morality. I chose to build rapture. But my city was betrayed by the weak. So I ask you, my friend, if your life were the prize, would you kill the innocent? Would you sacrifice your humanity? We all make choices, but in the end, our choices make us. So you may have questions about that trailer, and I showed that trailer first for a reason, and keep in mind, this is just a trailer for the game. You can see how much the developers wanted you to play this game and understand this game just by this trailer alone. How it immediately sets up the location, the basic time period, the atmosphere, the horror elements, it establishes and shows more of the little girls and big daddies you see everywhere when you see something related to Bioshock, and how they're tied together at the end. It sets how some of the combat and the, the plasmid stuff works, which is the shot that you saw him give himself and he got powers all of a sudden. You get to see the fear and survival that you as the main character will face against enemies like these big daddies in the game. It sets up how bloody and gory this game will be and that it's not afraid to, ha to have those elements in this, in this game. And even at the end, which is also what happens during the main title in the actual game, you see the Bioshock logo and the city in that logo. And as the light passes over it, it symbolizes the sun. And you can see how over time, it's nice and clean at the beginning, but as time goes on, as the sun passes over, it gets more disgusting and rusted over. And you get to wonder why in the world this person was about to kill this little girl with a whole wrench. And that perfectly shows and sets up everything that this game is. It's not, a, it's not another Halo 5 situation where it shows stuff and it, it, it doesn't play or have anything uh, that you see in that promotional stuff. It actually shows what's in the game and how the game plays basically from that one trailer. And even more than just that trailer, the intro to the game is very mysterious and at times it's unsettling and the scale is just, it's so large and you, you feel so tiny just alone in the sea, swimming to the lighthouse at the very beginning of the game. Of the game. And right from the get-go, you get an explanation for why Andrew Ryan, who is the guy who made Rapture, which is the name of the underwater city, you get to know why he made it and why it's there and why it exists, and it expertly explains why it exists so you don't wonder just like, 
huh, there's a city here. And right after that explanation, in my opinion, this is the greatest intro to a game's main location. It's it's just the way that it's done is so well, and I'm going to play that here for you. I rejected those answers. Instead, I chose something different. I chose the impossible. I chose rapture. The artist would not fear the censor, where the scientist would not be bound by petty morality, where the great would not be constrained by the small. And with the sweat of your brow, rapture can become your city as well. Immediately, you get a sense of scale and atmosphere from how massive this underwater city is and how empty and dead it looks, except for some sea life and, uh, like, the one... Big Daddy, the one or two Big Daddies you see walking across the structures, you don't see really anything. It just feels massive and dead. And it has such a good atmosphere. And everything about that intro is just, it's gripping to me. And I don't know about you, but it is to me. And, like, immediately after that intro, it shows the city, and it's very mysterious and kind of creepy, but at the same time, it's very it's gorgeous, and it looks great. But then immediately after that, it jumps right into the horror aspect, where you get introduced to some of the character types that you fight throughout the game, like the Splicers, the Big Daddies, and the people who lived in Rapture. And this game, as I've said, is, is like a horror game. It's basically a horror game. And I think it's even labeled as some kind of a horror game. Uh, but it's not the sense of it having jump scares that makes it scary. It's the way they use lighting and shadows of people that run off in the distance of a hallway or bloody messages on the walls like Chamber of Secrets. Or for example, how the models of the enemies look. I mean, I'll throw up a picture. They look disgusting and horrifying, and that itself can throw you off because they all live in this dystopian city where everything has gone downhill. And it shows how greed affects everyone in this city where they're all trying to scourge around for something called Adam, which the little girls collect and such, and that's why they have the big daddies to protect them, as you saw from the trailer where you just hand out to a little girl and protected her from getting hit with that wrench. And going back to the world building and atmosphere part, yes, it does have those awesome horror elements without incorporating jump scares. But another thing that it does really well that makes this massive underwater city so creepy and feel just massive and just really cool is the music that plays at the most perfect moments. It's just the score both composed uh, by it's uh, Gary Scheiman, I believe how you say it. He did the music for Bioshock 1 and 2. And the music used for, for example, Under the Sea are used so well. And I know, or not Under the Sea, sorry, Beyond the Sea. And I know Gary Scheiman didn't compose that, but it is music that is used in the game. And there isn't music playing every waking moment of this game, which works for things like, you know, for example, Doom with Mick Gordon, where you're constantly, for the most part, fighting demons. And this music is used all the time in those games. But it makes sense because it's a Doom game. But for Bioshock, it uses music sparingly. And in the moments you hear music, it's either used in-game, playing off a record player that is in the game, and for example, these underwater bars, or the music that Gary composes plays just at the right moment to either build suspense, emotion, or action, or just the overall atmosphere of it. And not just for the first one, but for Bioshock 2 as well. He does such a good job of incorporating that music right when it needs to be to make a more amazing feeling city. Just, it's it's absolutely insane how, how all this, all, everything works. And even the sound effects they're used in such a way that gives so much more depth and horror to the environments and enemies that you face. The combat as well is great because you have unique abilities called the plasmids, like I said at the beginning of the video, and they each do different things which work better uh, compared to others depending on the situation of combat that you're, that you're in. And another cool thing is how many weapons you can use and cycle throughout this game, and you can make different ammo types which work better on certain enemies, so you can have, so you can just be more smart about how you use a certain gun or ammo type, 
Because you could suffer from making the wrong choices, and if you die, it's 99% of the time your fault as a player, not for some stupid reason like in other games. And the games give you the tools to win these different combat situations by having these buy stations, weapon and plasmid upgrade stations, healing stations that's just placed around various parts of the level to where you can use money you found on ammo, med kits, and other things to make sure that you're prepared and you don't have to spend money all the time. And that's another thing that the game did. They incorporated a hacking system to the games where you can take a shot at hacking things and getting things either discounted or for free. But if you mess up, it is a gamble because you lose health every time you fail. So it's like it gives you the, a way to actually win things, but also you need to just be smart about it. So that way it's not endlessly, either you're out of ammo completely and it's just awful or you just have to all, ammo all the time and it doesn't feel threatening to fight enemies or anything. Now, as you guys have probably noticed, this this video is mostly talking about Bioshock 1 and 2, and I will make a video regarding my thoughts for Bioshock Infinite at some other time. I don't know when, but eventually I will. Uh, but I wanted to focus on these games that took place in Rapture and the ones that just came first, because I know that uh, Infinite is the one that everyone's kind of iffy on, and so I will cover that in another video, like I said. In Bioshock 2, you actually get to play as a big daddy, and you get to actually experience how the choices you make affects your kid that you're separated from most of the game and even throughout both of the games, not just the second game, you get to make your own choices and it affects the story of the game a bit and that's really cool and going back to Bioshock 2, it's such a good story and it really shows, uh, it goes deeper into how the whole relationship between these big like metallic creatures and these little girls in such a cool way. And you can really feel like the pain and everything from this big daddy you're playing as in Bioshock 2 without him ever really saying anything throughout the game. And it makes these big daddies that you see in the first game feel a bit more human as to the having no soul, these ruthless killing machines that you fight in Bioshock 1. And there's so much in these games. And if you love stories with twists, then these games are for you because they build everything and how they twist at the end are really cool and in my opinion they're really well done and these games did so well they both got a remaster and the remasters look absolutely amazing unlike other remasters and it didn't take away from the atmosphere or feel of the game whatsoever which is what remasters should do and honestly it's great even if you have the original versions because they both in my opinion they look great they feel great either way the remasters give more clarity to everything it adds more sea life but not too much and the original version has less sea life, and it doesn't have as much clarity. But that kind of, I guess, emptiness adds so much more to that massive dead feeling that I keep saying to the city. And to me, that's just, um, it's so cool to just everything about it. I, I don't know how to put it into words, dude. It's, it's so cool. The map designs of different levels of this game are also fantastic. There are things like a whole greenhouse type location in Bioshock 1 to literally get to walk on the bottom of the ocean in Bioshock 2. And these levels are most of the time on such a big scale where it's not necessarily free room, but the game invites you to explore and look around different rooms and listen to the different tapes placed around the levels to add more character, more side story type stuff to the game. And it's super cool how much more depth these things can add to the locations you find them at. It almost felt like the tape stuff in Halo 3 ODST, only it's a little bit more diverse and more in-depth, with which I, I appreciate more. These two games are so atmospheric and creepy and dark, and they have great stories. Even the sequel, as you can probably guess, I, are, I actually like that. And so did everyone else, for the most part. Normally sequels aren't known to be as good as the first one most of the time. And if you're interested in these games, you you should be. I mean, at least go try Bioshock 1. We, I know a majority of the people that watch my videos, most of us are Halo fans, and we don't have really any games coming out with a story that will be that great until December. I mean, we got Vanguard coming out, which, in my opinion, not looking forward to at all. Uh, and then we got Forza. Forza 5, and that's that's a big game that's coming out that I'm excited for, but... I mean, it's not a—it's not necessarily a story game. If you want to play a story game, you have this whole month to play Bioshock One and give it a shot, and before Halo Infinite comes out, which I know everyone's excited for. So, it, just at least try the first one. If you aren't sucked into this mysterious, wide-scaled world, then I'm sorry, 
go play Warzone. But if you do go and try it, I am proud of you for deciding to play an, an amazing game. And I highly recommend to play this alone, honestly, because uh, it enhances the immersion and the experience so much more. It's not necessarily a game you play with other people. And I recommend, honestly, playing this in the dark with headphones or some kind of surround sound if you can to truly experience Rapture at its best. <laughs>